Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal here. So in the past few days, um, I've been thinking about ways I could take this journey in learning about video production and video editing a little bit further. And one of the ways I've been wanting to go for a while is to start using a more advanced video editing program called DaVinci Resolve by a company called Blackmagic Design. Now DaVinci Resolve is really a professional grade video editing tool that's used by serious people in Hollywood, professional video editors. What I've been using to date is Caden Live for Ubuntu. Now I actually really like Caden Live for the most part, but I can see that it's a little bit limited. And if I want to actually learn video editing properly, which I think would be a tremendous skill to have, um, I'm probably gonna run into it not being strong enough or having enough features for me at some point sooner or later. So. DaVinci Resolve does have a free version for Ubuntu and a paid version called Studio. The license for Studio is about two or 300 bucks, I think. So my inclination was to just try to play around with the free tool for at least a few days to see if it could work with my hardware, to see if it was something I could wrap my head around before jumping in. But when I downloaded the free version and tried to just play around with an MP4 from my phone, I discovered what a lot of people have discovered is that I just had black clips and black preview window in Ubuntu. Now the reason for that, it's more complicated than I can explain, but basically there is a codec limitation in Ubuntu Linux that as far as I understand, DaVinci Resolve won't work with the H.264 codec that is mostly used for MP4 clips. Now I'm just a rookie in video editing, so I do not really understand this stuff. I have a rough handle on what codecs are. But that's the basic situation is if you just take an MP4 and dump it into DaVinci Resolve free version on Ubuntu, the program is not good. You're, you're just gonna have black basically. So what you actually need to do is to re-encode that um, to something that the program can recognize again, as far as I understand what's happening. So I did come across a YouTube clip uh, showing how to use FFMPEG, that CLI, in order to re-encode um, a clip. But the process of either using a command line interface or even just a batch script every single time I wanted to work with some video clips in DaVinci didn't really appeal to me. So I thought, you know what, before I just give up on this idea for the time being, I'm going to just ask on Reddit. So there is a subreddit for DaVinci Resolve users. There's also a, a community, but this is the subreddit. It's called, as you'd expect, R DaVinci Resolve. So I just asked people, um, what should I be doing if I want to re-encode? I figured because I posted here a few days ago and uh, I mentioned that I was ready to buy the premium version, but I wanted to just play around with it a little bit. And somebody said, well, if the only thing that you're missing is the uh, is that transcoding process, it's probably not worth upgrading to premium. So you should just learn how to recode or transcode, whatever the word I'm missing is, your clips. So that made sense to me. So I just didn't know how to do that. So um, I started a thread today on the subreddit. I mentioned that I'd seen the video on YouTube, but I wanted something better. And um, this user, LZR Gardney, explains a problem. Linux in the free version does not, does not support H.264 or H.265, those are two different video codecs. And uh, free, all free, not paid support AAC audio. And this is where he's actually recommending uh, the codec to use, DNXHR, um, and you can also use DNXHR for 8-bit and for 10-bit and PCM for the audio. FFMPEG will do this through a CLI, but Shutter Encoder, is a user-friendly GUI. And I was like, what Shutter Encoder? I never heard about this program before. I thought I'd seen all the different video tools on Ubuntu and I had not. Uh, it's shutterencoder.com. And if you just click on the download, uh, it couldn't be easier. There's both an app image and uh, there's a dev file uh, for Ubuntu. So I just downloaded that, installed that on my uh, Ubuntu computer and that's it running uh, right here. And I just ran a clip through it. Um, and you, all you have to do is use this function called DNXHD. And I'm just gonna do that now with a test clip uh, to show you how that works. I also just wanna give a quick shout out uh, to why are you emailing me? This other Reddit user who also said that DNXHR 
um, is a common proxy media codec and he had a bit more detail that you actually probably want to use that because he says that um, DN DNxHD is limited to 1920 so that's 1080p HD so obviously if you're trying to retranscode 4k video clips or above that's not going to help you uh, and as he points out this is going to take up more hard drive space of course because of the fact that you're going to be uh, creating more clips so I'm just going to show you how this program worked I just recorded a test video um, on my phone copy that over to my desktop and now I'm going to run it through this program okay so I've gone into my desktop and this is the video file that I just recorded using my uh, my Android here as you can see it produces an mp4 file it's uh, just probably going to be 82 megs actually is uh, not as small as I would have expected just a few seconds of me Okay, so that's it. You can see the audio is there. You can see the video is there. Now, just to doubly, double up a little bit and explain the problem, I'm just going to show you what happened when I try to uh, get this into um, DaVinci Resolve running on Ubuntu without doing any transcoding firstly. Okay, so I'm now in DaVinci Resolve. on. Um, this is running on Ubuntu 2010. I just added my desktop at where this clip is as a, a destination here in the Media tab. And I'm just gonna go into testing, which is where this clip is. Now, this is where it's sitting in the file system. You can see home Daniel desktop testing. But as you can see, when I open into that folder on, um, on DaVinci Resolve, all I'm getting is a black clip. So when this happened, I thought, this probably isn't what it's supposed to look like. So I can add that into my media pool, then go into my editing functionality. And you know I can drag this onto my editing timeline, but there's nothing to see it's just black and there's no audio waveform as well so I figured this was probably not what was supposed to be the case so now let me go ahead and uh, run this clip through shutter and you'll see uh, what's going to happen and that after doing this we can actually use this clip okay so I've just gone into shutter encoder now and I've just pointed it to uh, this test mp4 file sitting on my desktop now you can see if I scroll through uh, the available functions in editing codecs, uh, codecs, I have both DNxHD and DNxHR. I also have a couple more. Um, I also have the output codecs, including H.264 and 265. I have broadcast codecs, all codecs, um, and without I can also do things without actually converting the codec, like cutting without re-encoding, etc. So there's a lot of options here, and I'm sure I'll have a lot of fun. Uh, learning these as I continue my journey through video. So that's what I've done. I've added it. I've told it to use the uh, DX, DNX HD as a conversion format. There's a bunch of other things you can do here. Audio settings, uh, you can choose to uh, just change the time code, overlay, image sequence, etc., etc., etc. But all I'm going to do now is just do a basic encoding and I'm just going to click on start function. And now you can see it's already at 12%. So it's not, it's not actually that slow of, of a process, although this is only like a 10 second video clip. Uh, so I'm just gonna wait for this to reach 100%. And then I'm going to just show uh, the file on my computer. Then I'm going to repeat this process. And uh, it's already popped open here. So you can see it's created a new file with my original file name, um, underscore DNN, DNxHD. And now the format, instead of being a .mp4 file, it's a .mov file. So click on this. I can't see any difference. Now in terms of the file size, uh, it's 630 megabytes compared to the original file size of uh, 86. So it's mushroomed by a magnitude of six fold in size. So this, is gonna, this is gonna increase the size of the clips you're editing with, and it's going to increase the size of your rendered file. But nevertheless, let me now go ahead and uh, bring this into DaVinci and add this to the timeline. You'll see the difference now that this clip can be used. Okay, so same process, I'm now back into DaVinci Resolve. I'm going to go back to my media pool and I'm going to look through the files again, desktop, uh, testing, and I click on the testing folder. And now you can see I have my clip. So this is the original MP4. This is a converted into MOV. And as you can see, I have the level, so the audios come through as well. I can add that into my media pool, uh, change the project frame rate, and I'm gonna go now into my editing tab and just drag that onto the timeline. And as you can see, you can see I have an audio waveform now and I have video. It's going to be MP4 format as it comes off the phone, which is I believe. And now when I go through that clip, it doesn't uh, look any more like 
there's no black. Well, there is black here, but if you watch again. So there you go, that's how um, using the shutter encoder tool, I'm able to encode an MP4 uh, into a different codec and then get that audio and video to be read in uh, DaVinci Resolve on Ubuntu 2010. The free version, uh, the big negative here to point out the obvious is that that file size is considerably bigger than the MP4. So if you're running on kind of basic hardware, basic storage, uh, like the kind of setup I have, that's going to be uh, posing a sort of difficulty on your on your um, ability to edit clips but at least you can use it and play around a little bit with the software thank you guys for watching and thanks very much to my uh, the correspondents on reddit for pointing me in the direction of this program and sorting out the encoding issue on the free version of davinci uh, without having to use ffmpeg or a terminal program thank you guys for watching more videos will be coming soon